hey everyone so from this video we are going to learn about cloud so specifically we would be targeting aws and the purpose of creating this video is just to document my learning and here we go so the first thing that we want to learn is what actually is cloud right so before uh, directly jumping uh, to aws we should first understand the infra thing what actually cloud is what is the purpose and what is the different type of terminology the jargon that you should be aware of this videos covers all of them so let us first understand what actually is cloud right we might uh, be aware of that uh, earlier we used to see a lot of machines the hardware machines which is also called server room right that is now in transition to be replaced by cloud where you are not uh, responsible for maintaining the hardware resources but you are uh, there for uh, configuring the data and the resources that you are provisioning over the cloud right so what actually cloud is so cloud is a bunch of machine running inside a server warehouse right and it is like what the best benefit of cloud is is like you don't need to worry about the hardware you don't need to worry about the updates and security things right you just need to uh, focus on the work that you are doing without any uh, interruption right so it's just renting a virtual machine over the internet if you are someone who have been working on vm uh, vmware on vm machines then it is some something slightly similar to that but here we are just renting the hardware resources over the internet where which allows us to store the data which allows us to run application and we can access the resources from anywhere and anytime and that's the best thing because we don't need to maintain any hardware thing right hope that may make sense now moving forward with the uh, IaaS what is IaaS it's infra as a service now let's focus on the first term the first letter that is infra right when we say infra we uh, our mind directly clicks infra as in hardware right so here what infrastructure we are provisioning what we would be working on it would be ec2 so those who are new to cloud uh, so basically ec2 stands for elastic cloud compute so basically just like vmware uh, it is it does the same thing where we have multiple amis or the images right uh, in vmware we have iso in cloud we have amis amazon machine images right and uh, those images are used for provisioning uh, the different flavor of linux and like whatever uh, version whatever distro you want you can provision directly and you can run and you can use the uh, virtual machines on the go right the best example here would be amazon ec2 now proceeding forward with platform as a service now what you understand by platform p now let's take a very good example you might have been working on mysql right uh, there is an application uh, which uh, we install at our system uh, mysql uh, which is used for creating database you can do any uh, you can create your own database you can do crud operations right so it's a more or less a backend thing here uh, why i'm taking uh, this as an example so basically that stands out to be a best example for uh, platform as a service where you are not worrying about the hardware resources you are just here to perform your development task whatever you want to do you can code there directly right you don't need to worry about updates and patches it is uh, already done by the service provider here the example is amazon lambda and uh, amazon rds relational database right so basically it's it provides you a platform where you can develop run and manage your application without you need without need to worry on infrastructure right so let's proceed with the next one software as a service so software as a service right here you are just responsible for the configuration of the uh, resource right so best example here would be gmail because you just download that application you log in you configure it as per your ease and then you're good to go right you don't need to worry about the rest of the things it is all managed by the service provider so software as a service delivers software application over the internet on a subscription basis which are ready to use software right now let's understand the different type of cloud models right we have public cloud private cloud and hybrid cloud so before diving into private cloud let's understand with public cloud now what we understand with public right so when we say public cloud it is available over the internet and anyone can access it right here the example is aws gcp and azure now there is a with slight difference but with the same concept we have cloud, uh, private cloud right so 
what private cloud is so basically in public cloud all the resources are available to the people those who are there on the internet they can easily access it but in private cloud you define a rule a protocol has been mentioned where specific services and ip and uh, ips are uh, allowed to access that specific repo, uh, resource right because in private cloud uh, we make use of uh, vpc aws vpc which is known as a, uh, virtual private cloud right so you define what port should be exposed what uh, sort of ip range should be allowed to uh, access the data right which actually provides you uh, the complete control over your legacy software so basically we mostly use private cloud for the uh, legacy servers right so i hope that makes sense and let's move with the final one that is hybrid cloud so as we understand with hybrid it's a, a more or less fixture of public and private cloud right where we are combining both public and private cloud and allowing the data and application to be shared between them so we keep our legacy servers at the back end with the private cloud and keep the front end ui with the public cloud and we create a vpc in a such a way that the data uh, will be only accessed from the public and uh, like they can only access the data from the private cloud and no third party person would be allowed because we are already we have already specified the range uh, the ip address which are allowed to uh, hit into that specific cloud right moving forward with uh, the last topic that is a region and availability zone now what region is so region is uh, a graphical area where aws has data centers right you different region allows you to host your services which are closer to uh, your client right and the best part is each of the regions are isolated from each other so that uh, there is no discrepancies in the data here the example would be us east and uh, europe frankfurt uh, don't worry if you didn't understand what region is at the end i have created a diagram and there is a very good example which will make you easier to understand what regions and what availability zone is in order to remember the thing we call it ras r a z where r stands for region and a z stands for availability zones so what is availability zone so it is a specific location within region so remember availability zones falls under region right and it consists of one or more data centers each region has multiple ACs. For example, US East, so US East 1, US East 1B, right? So here is the diagrammatic representation which explains the region as in boundary, which consists of multiple availability zones, which consists of the data center. And as I mentioned earlier, each of the data centers are isolated from each other. So there is no discrepancy of the data. Now, how would, how would I remember it? So basically region is specifically you can imagine like a country and availability zone is like a city within the country. So for example, your region would be India and then your availability zone in that specific case would be Nagpur and Pune. All right. So that was all about this video and I hope you have learned uh, a lot about it. So thank you so much and see you in the next one.